Today we are going to be going through the British Physics Olympiad Senior Challenge from 2017. This video will cover only the multiple choice questions and uh, I'll be solving the written questions as well in the near future. Okay, well, let's get started with question one, which is all about dimensional analysis, which is a very important part of physics. Okay, so question one, which are the correct dimensions of a force in terms of the dimensions of mass, length, and time? Well, as you guys know, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So this means the dimensions of the force have to be the dimensions of mass, which are given as m times because acceleration is measured in meters per second squared this will be the dimensions of length divided by the dimensions of time squared so this would mean ml divided by 2 squared so the correct answer is a Okay, question 2 wind tunnel experiments are carried out on model aircraft well, how exciting, with the results scaled up to real size aircraft. In order to determine how the lift on, wing, on a wing scales up, a relation has to be found between the lift force F and the area of the wing A, the velocity V, and the density of the air. Which of the following expressions could correctly relate these quantities? Okay, well, this is actually another example of dimensional analysis which is often seems to be stressed in the British Physics Olympiads problems and in the International Physics Olympiad problems as well. So we know the dimensions of the force is what we worked out in question number one. So that would be the dimensions of mass times L divided by T squared. Now because the force is going to equal another set of quantities, the dimensions on the left had better be equal to the dimensions on the right. So the dimensions of the force are ml divided by t squared. Now we know that uh, a is not going to be the correct answer and that is because the density is down here at the bottom of or in the denominator of this fraction. The reason why it can't be A is because the dimensions of density are the dimensions of mass divided by volume, which is going to be L to a power of 3. So for the dimensions of force, we have M in the nominator, the top of this fraction. And over here, we're going to have that at the bottom of this fraction. So it's not going to be A. Well, let's work out the dimensions of answer B. So for B, we have a proposed equation that F is equal to A squared times the velocity times the density. Now let's see if the dimensions are going to match. So the area is going to have the dimensions of L squared. The speed is going to be in meters per second, so that's the dimensions of length divided by time. And density is going to be given in the dimensions of mass divided by L to the power of three dimensions of length cubed. And we're going to see that overall on the right hand side of this equation, the L's are going to cancel. So what we're left is M divided by T. So it's not going to be, uh, the answer is not going to be B. So well, let's work out the dimensions of C, which is a very similar expression. However, we have A, then we have multiplied by V squared times rho. So area is given in the dimensions of length squared. V squared is going to be given in dimensions of length squared divided by t squared like that and the dimensions of density are going to be the dimensions of mass divided by volume which is l to the power of three so overall this is going to give us l to the power of four times m 
divided by L to the power of 3 times T squared. So we can see that those guys are going to cancel out, and what we're left with is L times M divided by T squared, which uh, means that the dimensions on the left are going to match the dimensions on the right. So we are on to a winner with C. Okay guys, question three, which is all about the LHC accelerator at CERN. Really, really cool bit of physics. Now, the LHC accelerator at CERN has two beams of protons circulating in opposite directions, with each proton having an energy of seven terawatts, which is 10 to the power of 12. We also have the uh, circumference uh, being 27 kilometers, really, really well, the biggest particle accelerator in the world. And as I digress, and the protons circulate as bunches with 2,808 bunches per beam, and there are 1.15 times 10 to the power of 10 protons per each bunch. Uh, what is the energy of each beam in joules? Okay, well, um, let's work that out. First off, let's calculate the number of um, number of protons, and uh, we know that uh, there are 1.15 times 10 to the power of 11 in each bunch, and there there are 2,808 of those bunches. Now that's the number of electrons, a number of protons, excuse me. And what we need to do is we need to multiply this by the energy of each individual one. Now there are seven, there are seven, that is uh, seven tera, tera electron volts. So it's going to be seven tera electron volts. Tera stands for 10 to the power of 12. And an electron volt is um, 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. So if I put that into a scientific calculator, I'm going to get the amount of energy in each beam in joules. I am going to get 3, 6, 1, uh, 6, 7, oh, 400 joules. Of course, this is way too much significance uh, that uh, for for a number, so I know that a mega stands for ten to the power of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So overall, this is going to be about three hundred and sixty mega joules. Okay, guys. Question four: What is the current in each beam? Okay, so the formula for current is the rate of flow of charge. So delta Q divided by delta T. All we need to figure out is how much charge there is in each beam and how often or how quickly and what time does it complete one lap. So uh, let's start off with the amount of charge. This will be equal to the number of protons, which is once again uh, 1.15 times 10 to the power of 11 protons. And um, that's one bun bunch. So there are 2808 of those, and that's our number of protons. Each proton is going to have a charge though, and that's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, just the elementary charge. Now, for the amount of time, I'm just going to use uh, essentially distance divided by speed. I know that the distance, the circumference is 27 kilometers, and they're traveling at virtually the speed of light. So I'm just going to assume that they're traveling at the speed of light. So that will be 27 kilometers, so 27 times 10 to the power of 3. Then I'm going to be dividing that by the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8. As I'm putting this into a scientific calculator, I'm going to be very careful, very aware of these brackets because I'm going to get a completely different answer if uh, I put the brackets in the wrong place. If I put this incorrectly, I'm going to get about 0.57 amps, which is about 0.6 amps. So the correct answer has got to be D. 
Right, question five. The energy stored in the LHC at any moment is about 10 gigajoules, mainly the magnetic field of 1,200 magnets. If the mass of a magnet is about 35 times 10 to the power of 3 kg, and the energy stored was used to move the magnets in the form of kinetic energy, what would the speed be of a single magnet? Well, this is a standard kinetic energy formula problem and the formula for kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared so just rearranging for v i'm going to get that v will be equal to twice the energy divided by the total mass and all of that is square rooted so this would mean that this will be equal to two times the total energy is 10 gigajoules so 10 times 10 to the power of 9 and we're going to be dividing that by the total mass. So each magnet is 35 tons or 35 times 10 to the power of 3 kg. And there are 1,200 of them. Once again, we carefully put this into a calculator. And we're going to get about 21.82, which is about 22, uh, 22 meters per second. So the correct answer is D. And finally, question six, the energy content of an explosive TNT is 4.7 megajoules per kilogram. What mass of TNT is equivalent to the 10 gigajoules of energy stored in the LHC? What an interesting question. So, um, okay, well, the total mass stored in the LHC is 10 gigajoules. So that's gonna be 10 times 10 to the nine joules and a kilogram of um, of uh, TNT is going to give us 4.7 so we just need to divide really told those two numbers so it's going to be divided by 4.7 times 10 to the power of 6 and that's really going to give us 2127 kilograms which is about 2100 kilograms so the correct answer has to be C. Okay folks well hopefully you found these questions useful if you have please consider subscribing. Uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.